Hello friends and subscribers, a very warm welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video today from Jerusalem in Israel uh, from the lovely uh, home office as usual but uh, not in business as usual, I, this YouTube channel is uh, coming up on the 3000 subscriber milestone which is always, I like these 1000 subscriber milestones because they take a while to accumulate a thousand subscribers and uh, and uh, it's nice, it's nice to know that there's growth and uh, hopefully, I know it's going up at about kind of 10, 20 subscribers per day, give or take. So uh, if it continues at the, in this manner, uh, I might uh, hopefully have an excuse to go out for some pints on uh, Thursday to celebrate along, of course, with Thanksgiving, uh, aka Turkey Day. So I'll have two, an extra, extra fun weekend uh, if we can get to 3k in time. Um, it's been a real adventure, this YouTube uh, channel um, that I'm now trying to focus on Israel and at the start was really just a jumble of videos. Uh, since I hit my first 1000 subscriber milestone, I have, and that was actually only this year, so I guess the growth is uh, must be increasing. I don't keep an uh, overly neurotic eye on the numbers, but I do look at general trends. Um, and uh, I met a couple of uh, subscribers this year in real life. Uh, George, in the summer, I really enjoyed our drinks. Um, and uh, it's it's been fun. Uh, some of my friends follow my YouTube channel and give me ideas and feedback. Um, I get out there and I let mostly, most importantly, it gives me an outlet for my creativity. I'm always looking at exploring new formats. Um, and right now I'm getting a few graphics done up on Fiverr to hopefully jazz up the production value just a little bit uh, so you have more to look at than my face and this rather bland uh, uh, wall behind me. So today, as we're uh, coming up on that milestone, I thought I would do a comment mailbag, by which I mean I'm going to go through some recent comments that came in here on the YouTube comment bucket and uh, I'm going to talk through them. This is just some of the more interesting comments that I thought really merited a kind of thoughtful response and I will link to the comment in uh, the YouTube comments. By the way, how cool would it be if there was a, a video comments feature on YouTube? That would be, I was just thinking that the last day, if someone could leave a video comment, like if the comments thread was a thread of nested videos, um, I hope YouTube uh, brings that in at some point. All right, so this was on the Is Ireland an Anti-Semitic Country video. And just to say at the outset, uh, I strenuously disagree that Ireland is anti-Semitic. Uh, however, I have, as an Irish-born Jew, um, you know, just kind of tried to raise that there is anti-Semitism there and we're seeing it surge around the world. So that was sort of what that video uh, was talking about. And this comment from Mon Givlin, uh, I might butcher some of these usernames, I agree. And I was saying that Richard Boyd Barrett, even though he's just like, you know, kind of a, a fringe politician, I've been h highlighting his rhetoric because I think it's important to uh, to raise it and challenge it. And it doesn't get challenged in the Irish Parliament. And I think that's uh, problematic. So he says, I agree the anti he or she, I don't know these people's gender unless it's, uh, it's, uh, it's clear from the username. I agree that anti-Semitism can't go unchallenged. That's why I was hoping you could convince some of the Irish Jews to get together and report some of the hate speech uh, that has happened to the Gardaí, that's the Irish police at least, or maybe go to the papers to get their side of the story out, especially after what happened at the UCD debate to Jewish students. So uh, that's in reference to the Richard Boyd Barrett debate uh, in UCD and it kind of went to shit uh, towards the end and uh, some um, guy stood up and started shouting Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar and uh, said to a Jewish student that there'll be another October 7th so really nasty stuff uh, people on Twitter have been trying to like identify this guy uh, but via V the bigger point about you know can I get the the Irish Jews on board so regrettably um, we do not have a Irish Jewish WhatsApp group um, or any kind of direct means of communication. But more seriously, I haven't really been in such close contact with the Irish Jews. Um, I live in Israel, even though I have still got an Irish passport, but I don't think it's my place as a non-resident in Ireland to uh, report stuff to the Irish police, the Gardaí. Uh, but part of the reason, I, I don't even think it's possible, but even if it was, I, I don't think that's my... Um, that would be right. But I do agree that um, the Irish Jewish community should pursue uh, stuff like this when there is clear hate speech. 
And, um, you know, even as I said, some of the rhetoric of Richard Boyd Barrett, I think quali- should, uh, there is hate speech legislation in Ireland. I've looked it up. It just doesn't seem to be applied, uh, especially when it comes to uh, to Jews. So, yes, I agree that the Irish Jews should bandy together. Um, I am in contact with a couple of them. Uh, and I encourage if other people feel similarly, uh, give the Jewish Representative Council of Ireland, drop them an email and uh, tell them that you uh, watch this video and you're on board. Uh, encourage them to get moving about reporting this stuff to the Guardi. And I don't, I don't know that they're not doing it, but uh, if they're not doing it, just give them encouragement to don't put your head down. Uh, it's not the right approach. This stuff needs to be tackled. Um, and uh, there can't be a climate in which anti-Semitism is just allowed to, is tolerated in society. All right, so that's my uh, response to that comment. Thank you, uh, Mon Givlin, for commenting, and uh, all the comments on my YouTube are now on review mode, so um, these are ones that, 99% of the comments uh, I'm approving, but 1% of them are uh, deranged and crazy, and uh, it's just easier for me to, I don't, easier to do it for me to do it this way. So I did a video um, about Ireland tells Israel to be proportionate in response to the mass murder of its civilians. This was obviously, this was like just after the war broke out and Ireland's PM, Leo Varadkar said, uh, you know, you need to, he was the first person really to kind of, this was kind of before um, public opinion turned against Israel and, you know, the European Union was Ursula van der Leyen said, uh, we stand with Israel and the world was still very much on board with Israel. And while that was happening, Ireland, this was the start of Ireland kind of booking the trend and its prime minister, Leo Varadkar, said, well, you need to be proportional. Proportionality has to be your top concern, Israel, if you're going into Gaza. So this, this, and I just said in the video, look, proportionality, what does that mean when 1400 Israelis were butchered and babies were beheaded and uh, all sorts of atrocities. Like, how do you calibrate a proportionate response to that? So I thought this was a very well-written comment from Yair uh, Biria. You want proportionate? What, you want us Israelis to kidnap and behead 40 babies and post videos of that online? You want us to kidnap girls from music festivals? Um it's all on tape. Hamas made those claims uh, decades. And who in Gaza helped those hostages? Being scared and being complicit are indistinguishable from outside of the exact same result. The evil prevails. So yeah, look, I, I just, um, I don't want to kind of say too much about that comment just because I really agree with it. And uh, I guess saying I agree is uh, is enough. But that, that was the point I was trying to articulate in the video is that this concept of proportionality, I do... It is something that I think about when I see these horrific images of Palestinian babies being pulled out from rubble and how does Israel be proportionate in its use of force and is it being as proportionate as it can be? See, the thing is that from that's just such an unknowable question uh, without having deep insight into the military uh, exercise going on. But in general, I find just kind of blanket statements or not blanket statements, just like open-ended things like, well, you need to be proportionate. I, d- I find that to be very unhelpful because um, it's impo- it seems to be an impossible standard and it's a standard that doesn't seem to be applied in, uh, have been applied to other countries who are, uh, you know, exercising uh, self-defense. So back in memory lane, I plucked out this uh, comment from uh, when... The elections were still some. The local elections were still something anybody cared about in Israel, and uh, I've I was involved in. Uh, firstly, there was I was doing videos about that, and I've gotten involved in uh, helping this local party called Titora Root, or campaigning. Um, not campaigning because I'm not sort of you know I'm not I'm not uh, uh, running for office, but I've been uh, helping them uh, with videos and stuff like that. So I recorded this video of Adir Schwartz, who is there the head of that uh, electoral faction. And I like this comment from um, a guy called uh, Daniel JV1. I'm just going to call him Daniel. So I was happy to read to Torut's platform, specifically the section on planning. It goes in the right direction, but there are no references to architecture, although textured construction is mentioned. Uh, This is interesting to me because my wife is an architect and uh, my wife talks uh, incessantly about uh, urban planning and how poor urban planning is in Israeli cities, and this is very much her 
um, is something she's very engaged in. And she, her, her passion has kind of sparked an interest in me. Obviously, as a non-architect, I know far less than her, but um, I, 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 this really resonates with me. Jerusalem needs to be more beautiful. Please focus on improving the public realm and engineering standards, creating development policies regarding architectural design, reducing the amount of dilapidated buildings. Like that one is for sure. For instance, there's this place called Binyan. Actually, I was going to say the Binyan Clouds. I, sh- I should just say the, the building I'm standing in that I live in is a little bit dilapidated even though it's not really a bad, uh, you know, we don't live in a bad apartment, but there's just so much old dilapidated stuff around the place that you'd really, it really kind of isn't befitting of Jerusalem. That's so much of it, you know, in it built, I was going to say Binyan Klal is the classic one. Uh, Binyan Pa'amon is pretty bad as well. Um, so uh, with the force of law and uh, these are the issues I really want, I, I want us to deal with to give Jerusalem the beauty that it, it deserves. Um so yeah, it talks about Amsterdam, which is uh, and uh, the Netherlands, which is uh, really held out as a great example of urbanism, successful urbanism. It's about th- I love this sentence so much. It's about time we stop treating Jerusalem like a provincial town on the outskirts of Israel. It's about time we treat it as the eternal capital of the Jewish people and as one of the most important cities in the world for billions of people. Please make Jerusalem more beautiful. Yeah, one hundred and. 50% behind that beautifully articulated uh, that's the thing about Jerusalem um when i know people people can dis- people will disagree with me and say what are you talking about Jerusalem is very beautiful I, the old city of Jerusalem is magnificent and uh you know just totally historic but the rest of Jerusalem when i go to Tel Aviv and i go to Tel Aviv about once a week for business i feel like i've upgraded city not talking about South Tel Aviv and, and Tel Aviv has its really dilapidated parts, but it just in terms of the the skyscrapers, um, the feeling that this is a prosperous, vibrant, modern city and Jerusalem just kind of feels like it's really punching below its weight um, and it doesn't feel like the capital city. It feels like Tel Aviv is the capital and Jerusalem is this kind of slightly backwaterish provincial place and uh, I don't know how better to put it, but that's exactly how I feel. I, I'm as much as I um, sort of sometimes despair about Jerusalem and the way it's going and the extremism here and um, the lack of jobs, um, I do equally really want to see it go in a better direction. And I really connected with that comment. Um, so thank you for writing in. Um, okay, here is one from uh, Doug Bevan. Another interesting and slightly hilarious video. I was hoping Shimshon is going to cover the Persian restaurant I've seen him mention on Facebook at the Klal Center. Is it still there? I'm not even sure of its name. Is it Ochlim Bashuk? My internet searches turn up nothing. So uh, this was from the Shimshon Lashinsky video. So I just want to say the Shimshon Lashinsky videos have been uh, hilarious for me to uh, to put together. Shimshon is a very intriguing character and uh, very, very funny to film because he's just like this bundle of energy and he just shoots off in all these directions at once. Uh, so the last one we did was about uh, Sabich, um, a Sabich place on Agrippa Street and I'm always trying to uh, uh, talk to Shimshon or we, we chat periodically. I'm, I'm always trying to suggest ideas for funny videos because as much as Shimshon does food reviews, Shimshon Lashinsky, uh, the food reviewer, as much as he does a lot of food reviews, I think his just general comments about uh, Jerusalem and Israel are just so much, so so much more funny. And that that Binyan Klal video, I thought was kind of a classic. It's probably one of my favorite videos I've put out because he was just shooting from the hip, and it was ridiculous. Like he, I think at one point pointed to this old. Um, printer and said this guy's got to clean up his act and then there was like a corridor in the building that led to nothing there was not he was like this is the only corridor in the world that that leads nowhere so it was just so, such a funny video and uh, brings back fond memories for me and I really hope I can uh, convince Shimshon to create more content like that because we had a lot of fun producing it oh and about the restaurant uh, I'm pretty sure it's still there and I actually said to Shimshon we should do that place so uh, I will uh, remind him so um okay Daniel I'm pl- so now now let's go um so the thing about these comments is I get comments from before I decided to make this YouTube channel just about Israel uh and I created some splinter YouTube channels so this predates this so this comments mailbag is just a bunch of random ones 
so this is related to um, I did a video when Canon came out with four new camcorders in the Canon XA series, which I love. Daniel, I'm planning on buying a Canon XA60. Please let me know if the Canon XA60 XA will get overheated if I record my kids playing outdoors for over an hour or so. Um, I basically I looked up the spec sheet for this for this guy, and it says that it can record for 500 minutes. And uh, I, I, I never miss an opportunity to talk about how great camcorders are. The beauty of camcorders is they're built for video. And uh, someone on YouTube uh, once said that camcorders will keep recording as the apocalypse apocalypse, apocalypse hits and the world ends. And uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I live in Israel, obviously, and it's very hot here. And I've recorded um, in the burning 30 40 degree sun with my camcorder lots of the with my xa40 and it, it's just a tank it's never given me like an overheating message uh, it just keeps recording uh so yeah um i think i think uh, i think you'll be pretty safe uh to record your kids playing outside for decent periods on the camcorder um I, this is an old comment now it's a month old but uh i'm just uh, as i said picking out interesting ones all right, change, change of pace, back to Ireland, Israel. So uh, Richard Boy Barrett, this is when I was highlighting some of the stuff he says. Um, if I live in Ireland and I'm sickened by this odious anti-Semitic runt, constant rhetoric, this is word for word the same bullshit that Hitler spewed. People before profit should be expelled from dull air and effective immediately and any multinational companies um, will be similar. Don't see their Jewish communities. Oh, this is a, this is a point that I wanted to highlight. Our, uh, people before profit don't seem to realise that there are Jewish communities all over Ireland and his vile rhetoric has placed them in danger of attack. And uh, yeah, this is exactly, I think I've already made this point here, why I'm doing these videos. I think it, there's not exactly, Ireland isn't exactly overflowing with Jews. It is quite a small community. But yes, this rhetoric is problematic, not just because it goes totally unchallenged in the doll. And the best you get is kind of a pretty weak response back from Leo Varadkar. But there's no uh, there's no advocate for Ireland in this in this entire parliament. There's no one who really stands up and and takes him to task on these things. And uh, yeah, it creates a real atmosphere of fear and it incites up hatred that absolutely I I fear will be uh, can even if there are very few Jews will uh, will spur action. Another one on Irish anti-Semitism from Cor Cormac McQuinlan. It's true that we don't have the kind of vicious, all-out, barefaced anti-Semitism you get in European countries. Uh, but part of that is because the Jewish pop here is negligible. But it is a growing community. Um, I'm not sure that's correct, but I'll, I'll take his word for it. Uh, now between three to four. Th I've been out of Ireland for so long, I don't know what the trends are. Uh, so it's growing, apparently. The 27... 2000... 700 figure is from 2016 and it's been growing relatively well since then um so that's interesting uh, and he uh echoes that um belief that richard boy barrett needs to be challenged because of the um climate of fear it's creating for all these people um dos palmas cb uh who's been a great uh, supporter of this channel and commenter on many videos i appreciate the engagement i did a video a few days ago called how to rent property in israel a guy talking about my uh war stories of renting in israel for nine years and uh, basically how to do it um so he says uh, we hope to help sort something out when we come over in april um, in Spain, this guy lives in Spain. It's common practice to pay estate agents a month rent commission and a security deposit of one or two months. So yeah, we have to do that too. There's also there's a security deposit. There is the realtor fee plus VAT. So um, the but the point anyway that I wanted to, to to reply back is just to say that yeah, like the rental market here sucks. Although I've heard, I think the fact that re that renters tenants have to pay realtor fees is crazy but i've heard it's like that in new york as well so um yeah it's always it's always interesting to know that stuff isn't uniquely bad here uh in certain respects um just it's not a good time to be a renter uh so yeah we need to really step up our code that's int anyway that was interesting so i've never lived in spain all right oh beautiful uh i randomized this uh youtube comment section so i didn't know which order they'd come in so i'm really happy to finish on the m disc uh this is the last comment that I'm going to be answering um, before M discs. So the M disc is um, one of the greatest little 
random technologies I've stumbled upon. It's this uh, basically modified Blu-ray. People remember when Blu-ray discs were on the, or on the scene and it's supposed to uh, be impervious to data rot. So it's supposed to basically hold your data for like a thousand years or something, you know, uh, uh, crazy like that. So I don't, I can't, you know, I can't teleport into the future to say, hey, it works. So right now I'm just going on trust. Um, but uh, it's uh, reduced my anxiety about data because um, when I create video data like this, I do worry that it'll uh, just disappear one day or the you know my, my YouTube account will be hacked or vanish and all my videos will be gone. So I back up, back up all these videos onto two sets of M-Discs and one of them gets posted out to the US. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty wacky system I have going. But uh, so this guy says, Francois says, before M-Discs, I use gold recordable DVDs and CDs. I have some gold CDRs that are more than 25 years old and all the data reads perfectly. The same for some gold DVDRs that are more than 15 years old. So there you go, guys. Just just goes to show that optical data is a beast. And um, I basically all the M-Discs that I've burned as, uh, are working, but that's only three years uh, but uh, I, I don't worry about them. I, I think the data is going to be good. And uh, I love reading comments like that, that in this in this era of, um, every, you know, all it's so common for everyone to just offload everything to cloud providers, third party cloud providers, which you don't have control over. And uh, these I love when these really old school technologies like CDs and DVDs just kind of come to the rescue and they're still relevant. Um um, the M disc M disc videos have received quite a bit of interest, and I've uh, generated quite a bit of comments over their uh, over their time up on YouTube. All right, so that's it. That is the comment mailbag. Um, I will do another one, uh, perhaps in a couple of months months when I have more comments to go to to talk back to. And until then, thank you for watching, and uh, until the next video.